G'day everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up the new Taylor Drift Got It Try Hard 2.2 script. I'll also give you a basic demonstration and explanation for each mod. If you want to download this script then you'll need to get it from the Taylor Drift Discord. There'll be a link to that in the description of this video. There'll also be a link to a video of me showing you how to install it on your Zen. So if you're not sure how to do that, make sure to watch that video before continuing with this one. I'll make sure to tell you what buttons to press as we go along, but I'm going to put some instructions on the screen now. So if you're brand new to this script, take a screenshot now and keep those handy. And that way you'll have something to look at if you get stuck and can't remember what to press. Now that that's all out of the way, let's get into it. Once you have the script on your Zen, it would look like this. You will now need to enter the menu. To do this, if you have an Xbox controller, press LT and menu. Or if you have a PlayStation controller, press L2 and options. You will now be in the main menu of the script. From here, you can use up and down on the D-pad to scroll through the menu and press A if you're on Xbox or X if you're on PlayStation to enter the menu further. Now we use left and right on the D-pad to scroll through the options and up and down on the D-pad to turn the mods or settings off and on. Some mods only have an off or on function. Some allow you to enter the mod further and adjust the values. To enter the settings of a particular mod, if you're on Xbox, press A or PlayStation, press X. To adjust the values of a mod, you need to hold left trigger and use the D-pad if you're on Xbox. And if you're on PlayStation, you need to hold L2 and use the D-pad. Left and right on the D-pad will increase the values one at a time. Up and down will increase them 10 at a time, sometimes more depending on the mod. To back out of the settings and the whole menu, you need to press B on Xbox or circle on PlayStation. Once you back out of the menu completely, it will automatically save any changes you've made. There is also a driving mode in this script, also known as a kill switch. This will stop all mods from running. It's mainly used when you're driving a vehicle in Warzone. To activate it, simply hold the right trigger and double tap right on the D-pad for Xbox or R2 and double tap right on the D-pad for PlayStation. Pressing X on Xbox or square on PlayStation will deactivate. So by now, you should know how to enter the menu, navigate your way around the menu, and change the values. Now let's move on to what you need to do when setting the script up for the first time. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is enter the menu. We're going to go down to the settings option here. Go into the settings options, and the first thing you'll see here is the controller layout. You need to scroll through this menu and choose the controller layout that you play with in the game. If you play on any of these flipped controller layouts, a couple of things will change. The way you enter the menu will now be LB and menu if you're on Xbox, L1 and options if you're on PlayStation station and the way you change the values instead of holding the left trigger or l2 you will now just hold lb or l1 and use the d-pad instead moving on from that though the next one is block rumble so you need to make sure that you've got the in-game vibration turned on if you want to block that vibration you can do that here in the script and you do that by turning that on if you want to do that. Moving over again, we've got the profile button here. Now, this will be the button that you need to press that will change the script from primary to secondary. This script comes with three separate profiles, a primary, a secondary, and also a custom, also known as the Warzone profile, which allows you to have three separate anti-recall settings for three different weapons. So the button that you choose here will be the button that makes the script change from primary to secondary and back again when you press this button in the game. So for most people, including myself, they go with triangle Y because that's the button that you press in the game to change weapons. Weapons. So that's what we want to use to change from primary to secondary on the script as well. Moving over from the profile button, we have our resync buttons. Now the resync buttons are there for when the primary and secondary profile get a little bit mixed up. So sometimes you'll have your secondary weapon out in the game, but you'll be on your primary profile. So say for example, if you have a DMR as your primary and your secondary is just a normal SMG like the OTS, if you get the profiles mixed up, you're going to have rapid fire on your OTS, which is not what you want. So when things do get a little bit mixed up, what you can do is press these resync buttons to change change the profile on the script, but you won't change weapons in the game. To choose these resync buttons, what we're going to do is you're going to hold your ADS button on the controller and then use left and right on the D-pad to scroll through and choose your first button option. Once you've selected the first button, you're going to let go of your ADS button, press down on the D-pad, hold the ADS button again, and then you're going to go through and choose your second button. So for me, I'm going to go with L2, LT, and D-pad down. Once you've selected those two buttons, we can move on to the next one, which is custom profile. The custom profile is a third profile profile on the script. So just like the primary and secondary allows you to have separate anti-recoil settings for say two different weapons, the custom profile is another profile for different settings again. Now a lot of people use this for ground loot. I've done videos on the past on how to use the custom profile or the warzone profile as it was known in previous scripts uh, for ground loot. To set these up, all we're going to do is use the exact same method we just used to select our resync buttons to select these custom profile buttons here. So go through and choose yours now. I've gone with R3 slash RS and D-pad down. You don't have to copy these exactly. Choose whatever's comfortable for 
for you. Once you're done selecting those, we're back to the start here. So we're going to press B or circle to come back to the main menu. And we're now going to come down to the quick toggle section here. In this quick toggle section, you'll find a few different mods that you can make quick toggles for. The quick toggles will allow you to quickly turn one of these mods off or on without having to come into the menu. I like to always have one set up for rapid fire. I'm going to do that now. I'm going to set mine for L2, LT and D-pad up. Again, you don't have to copy these. This is just what I like to do. Do whatever's comfortable for you. But I do suggest having a rapid fire on a quick toggle. If you do want to set one up for strafe shot or prone shot, then go ahead and do that. But I'm not going to do that now. Jump shot neither. But again, that's all up to you. Handgun mode. This is new when you activate it. It's mainly for when you start a game of Warzone and you have your pistol. The handgun mode has its own separate anti-recall setting and also will automatically turn rapid fire on. So that way, when you start your game of Warzone, you can press your handgun mode quick toggle buttons and that will give you different anti-recoil and rapid fire on for that starting pistol that you get. So if you want to set up a quick toggle for handgun mode, go ahead and do that now. And then after that, we've got on the fly recoil. So on the fly recoil, again, pretty self-explanatory, but it means you'll be able to adjust your anti-recoil values without having to come into the menu each time. Now to do this, you're going to have to hold the ADS button and press a certain button. One button to turn the value up and one button to turn the value down. What buttons you press for that is up to you and you're going to choose those here. So to select those buttons, we're going to use the exact same method that we've been using this entire time to select our resync buttons, our custom profile buttons. I think you get the point. There is another quick toggle selection here for shape shifter. This will change your aim assist shape. Just like how on the fly recoil works, you can change your anti-recoil values on the fly. This will allow you to change your aim assist shape on the fly as well. So if you want to go through and choose buttons for that, then go ahead and do that. But I'm going to leave them blank. After that, you can press B or circle and back out and come back to the main menu. And we're going to scroll up to the mod menu part here. And now we're going to start going through and looking at which mods we want to use. So I'm, firstly, I'm going to go through and just give a basic explanation of what each of the mods are. Then I'll jump into a private lobby and go through and show you how they work. All right, so the first two mods that you'll come to are anti-recoil. We've got the two basic ones here, rumble anti-recoil, which works off the in-game vibration. And then we have legacy anti-recoil, which is an even more basic anti-recoil that just activates as soon as you press your shoot button. So when you come into the options here, you can adjust these. Like I mentioned earlier, the higher you put the number, the more the Zen will tell your console or PC that you're pulling down on the right stick to control the recoil. The V stands for vertical. There's also H for horizontal. So this is left and right. If the weapons recoil goes to the right, you're going to move these values to the left. And if the weapons recoil goes to the left, you're going to move these horizontal values to the right. Now, another thing with the vertical, if you do play inverted, all you need to do is put these into the minus instead. So that's it for these two, just two basic anti-recoil mods. The next one is another anti-recoil mod, but it's more in depth. This one is progressive anti-recoil. You only need to have one on at a time. Now with progressive, there's a few more options in here, as you can see. It's not just the vertical strength and the horizontal strength. There is a few more here to choose from. The progressive anti-recoil is an anti-recoil mod that you can make change its strength over a certain amount of time. I have made a full video about progressive anti-recoil in the past, which I'll make sure to leave a link to in the description. So if you want to go and watch that and get a much more detailed explanation of how it works, then click on the link and go and watch that one. But this is just a more advanced anti-recoil. Like I said, you can change the anti-recoil strength over time. So we've got vertical start, vertical end, and the time. So as an example, if I put the vertical start on 20, vertical end on 10, and the vertical time on 1000, which stands for one second. This means that when I start shooting in the game, the vertical start strength of 20 is applied for one second, and then it will change to the vertical end value of 10 until you stop shooting. Now, this is to be used when you get weapons like the XM4 in Warzone. Now, when you first shoot the weapon, it kicks up quite a fair bit, but then after the first 20 rounds or so, the recoil smooths out. So with an anti-recoil mod like Progressive, you can make it so the anti-recoil mod is a bit stronger at the start when you first fire the weapon, and then the anti-recoil gets a little bit weaker towards the end when the weapon's recoil isn't as strong. After the anti-recoil section, we move into the aim assist parts here. I'm not going to go into extreme detail about all of these because this video is already going to go for long enough, but I have made videos in the past about how the Taylor Drift aim assist works. So there will be a link to that as well in the description of this. If you want to see a much more detailed explanation of how the aim assist stuff works, then make sure to go and watch that. But just to give you a very basic rundown now, the aim assist stuff is all made just to manipulate the in-game aim assist. The in-game aim assist all depends on certain movements and that sort of thing, and all these aim assist mods are built around manipulating that in some way shape or form now going in here there's a few different options you can go through again i'm not going to go through extreme detail because i've done it in separate videos that take long enough but this is all the aim assist stuff now the thing is is that when people see this they start overthinking and they start the oh what do i need to do how do i get the best and the very stickiest aim assist settings that are completely possible with this and look the thing is if you're thinking like that you're thinking completely wrong about the aim assist mods that come with the chronosent or just in the script in general i promise you you can come in here you can turn 
turn, you only need to turn one of them on. V3, V4, or V5, that's all up to you. My personal favorite is V3, but all you need to do is come in here and turn one of these on. You don't have to stress about changing all the values and changing this and changing that because just by turning this aim assist on, you will have a noticeably stronger aim assist in the game. It's nothing like aimbot. It's never going to be like that, but you will have a noticeably stronger aim assist just by turning this on. You are not missing out on some sort of super extra sticky aim assist just because you're not changing aim assist value. So do not stress about that. When you're brand new to the script, what I strongly recommend doing is just testing out each one. So turn V3 on, play a few games with that, maybe play all day with that if you like, depending how much time you have. And then after a few games or however long you want, turn this one off, move over, turn that one on. And then do the same for V5 until you find one that you like more. One thing that I suggest doing is coming into the settings of it, one of the aim assist ones, turning shape direction on, and also turning the tailor tracking on as well. If you're brand new to the script, I really don't recommend coming in here and mucking around with the values. If you really want to, you get into that later on. But when you're brand new to this script, especially if you're watching this video, you're probably brand new to the script. I strongly recommend just coming in here and turning one of these aim assists on, also turning shape direction on, and also the tailor tracking here. I don't recommend messing around with any of these values until you've used the script for at least a few days, maybe a couple of weeks, and then maybe experiment with changing a few things around. But like I said before, you're not going to be missing out on anything just because you're not changing aim assist values. So don't stress. Now, all of the other stuff that's here, all this other stuff, it's going to be much better if I get into a private lobby and just show you how that works. So let's do that. All right, so they're going to go through the other available mods here. The first one is rapid fire. Now, when you turn this one on, you've got two choices. You've got fire only and you've got ADS plus bumper. So fire only means that when you pull your fire trigger, that's when the rapid fire will activate. We've got that one set to 15 RPS. So when I hold the trigger, you'll see on the screen there that the Zen sends the signal to my PC or console in your case, if you're on console. Uh, that I'm pulling that trigger quite quickly, which gives you that rapid fire effect. So this is good for pistols, shotguns, anything that you need to keep tapping the trigger for to make it keep shooting. That's what the rapid fire is for. It's not going to make the weapon shoot any faster than what the game allows it to. Now, the other option in here, which is the ADS plus bumper, this means you can have rapid fire on, but when you aim down your sight and press the normal shoot trigger, there's no rapid fire. You still need to tap it to get it to shoot like that. However, with the ADS plus bumper option, if you aim down your sight and press your right bumper, Again, on trigger, it's just one. If I pull my right bumper or R1, if I was on a PlayStation controller, that's when rapid fire activates. So that's the difference between the ADS bumper rapid fire and the fire only. Now, moving over, we've got strafe shot. Now, this means that it'll automatically make my operator strafe. Once I start shooting, we'll change over here. And when I start shooting, you'll see... There you go, automatically move left and right. Now you can come in here and you can change uh, the values for that one. So strafe shot will come in, we can make it quicker if you like to. So if you want the strafe to be quicker, you can do that. Like so, and it works the same way. Turning it up makes it longer. All right, now the next mod is cancel reload. You'll see with cancel reload turned off, when I go to reload the weapon, if I shoot after that or try to shoot, nothing happens until that reload animation is finished. However, with the cancel reload mod turned on, it is adjustable as well. So I've made some changes. It is on 2000 as default, I'll turn it down to 1000. You'll see now that when I shoot, as I go to reload, if I pull the trigger, it starts shooting again straight away. You don't have to wait for that reload animation to finish. If you start reloading, you end up getting pushed by somebody else. You're no longer stuck or you don't have to double tap Y or triangle yourself. To stop the reload animation, you can just start shooting again. So I uh, go to reload, press it. There we go. That's what the cancel reload does. The next mod is the hold breath mod. So this one is used for sniping. Now with it off, you'll see that as soon as I aim down my sight, I'll need to, you know, click the stick in there to hold my breath and make the aim steady. Now with this mod turned on, it does that for you as soon as you aim down your sight. So I'll turn that on. You'll now see with the controller on the screen there, I aim down my sight and there we go. It pulls it straight away. So your aim is as, as steady as possible as soon as you pull that trigger. So next is the sensitivity mod here. This is going to modify your sensitivity. So the first one, general, changing the values here of the general sensitivity is just like changing your sensitivity of these two, the horizontal and the vertical stick sensitivity. It's the same as changing that. Now you've got the ADS one here. That's the exact same as changing your ADS multiplier here. The next one after that is fire. So this one will allow you to change the sensitivity of when you're hit firing only, which you can't do in the game settings here. So to give you an example, Example. If I go over to fire and we turn this one, I shall give an example first. If I hit fire, just left and right, like crazy. If I go back in, we make sure that one's turned on. Go over to the fire only and we turn this one down to say 50, just so we can really tell the difference. Once I back out so that saves, I'll shoot and move left and right. 
I was moving my stick fully left and right, but the sensitivity mod is on and it's only letting me move a certain amount. So it slows down your sensitivity when you hit firing only and you can't do that in the in-game setting. So that's what this sensitivity mod is good for. You don't have to turn it all the way down to 50. Experiment with what works good for you, but that's how it works. Now we've got the slide cancel mod. So you want to put that one on Modern Warfare if you're playing Modern Warfare, Cold War if you're playing Cold War, the Modern Warfare one if you're playing Vanguard and if you're playing Halo that has just recently come out, the Cold War one works for that. But either way, this is just your basic slide cancel mod. Works fantastic. It does have a delay in there as well, a delay option that you can change. So if you want a shorter or a longer slide cancel, you can change that, which is there, but 70 does work well. So all you need to do is just tap your slide button. For me, that's B, and you can see the mod does the rest. And that's how the slide cancel mod works. Handgun mode, I explained that before, but you go in there. There's an anti-recoil setting there for the starting pistol that you get in Warzone. There's also some uh, different aim assist settings there as well, but I recommend just leaving those the same. And rapid fire automatically turns on when you have handgun mode on too, so we can skip that. Enemy ping, the ping isn't going to work in this, but all it does is when you start shooting, is it'll start pinging that area on the map. So it can get quite annoying. It's going to piss people off on your team, but when you're playing solos, it does work quite well. Bunny hop, this allows you to just hold your jump button and the Zen will send a signal to your console or PC that you or spamming the jump button. If I back out here so you see what I mean, I just hold A. You'll see the bunny hop mod is spamming A there for me to make me keep jumping. With prone shot turned on, when you shoot, that's going to make you go prone. So kind of like a drop shot, as everybody knows it by. So there you go. As you start shooting, you can see what it does. With jump shot turned on, your operator will jump as you're shooting. So I hold. And there we go. That's how that one works. And then we've got fast melee. So with fast melee, if I just hold that, you see, not much happens. Just one swipe, but with fast melee turned on, now what happens when I hold it, the Zen does the rest and it spams it for me. And they'll throw punches as quick as possible. After fast melee, we're back to the start of anti-recoil. We're not going to go into anti-recoil stuff, but you just... You know, turn these values up if the recoil goes up and you turn them down if the recoil goes down and it's much better to work it out shooting at people so um, either do that in a plunder mat or do it against bots if you've got multiplayer but I've done videos before on how to work out the rumble anti-recoil stuff again this video is going for long enough I'm not going to get into it now but it's extremely easy you're just going to turn this value up if the recoil goes up and down if the recoil goes down and there we go so that's everything I wanted to go through for this video if you want to see more about setting up anti-recoil for this script then go and watch literally any video that I've made in the past about any warzone weapon any vanguard weapon and using a Taylor Drift Scottish Tryhard script. It doesn't have to be this version because in the previous Scottish Tryhard versions, Rumble Anti-Recall was still in there and it worked the exact same way as it does in this one. I will be using this script and Rumble Anti-Recall in the future. So any videos that come out then where I'm talking about a no recall sort of weapon or setting up a weapon so it beams, I'll most likely be using Rumble Anti-Recall and show you just how easy it is. But I wouldn't be sitting here saying, you know, it's this easy this many times if it, if it wasn't. But by now you should know how to enter the menu, navigate your way around the menu, change the values. If you're brand new to the script, you're pretty much going to be set up and good to go. You've got your controller layout set up. We've got some quick toggle set up. We've got the Warzone profile set up or custom profile as it's known now. Any of the other mods, that's all up to you. Remember, like I said, you don't have to overthink the aim assist stuff. Choose one, turn some of the stuff on and go and have some fun with the script. Now, if you do have any questions in regards to this script or any questions about the Zen, feel free to ask those in the comments. Cheers for watching and I'll see you next time.